about tutorial dudes and today I'm going to show you how to build um, one of the fastest computers in the world with under two thousand dollars now some of you may come complaining that oh it's not really the fastest computer in the world true it doesn't have the most gigahertz um, for the processor but it's really fast to me it can run pretty much every game that is out there on the highest graphic settings um, I'm sure there's a oh, slightly faster computer out there but for under two thousand dollars you really can't go too much wrong with this. Um, this does not include like a computer case and the cost of building a computer. It the cost of building a computer can greatly vary. Like I have a friend who would do it for me in like for like hundred fifty dollars. If you want to get professional, it may cost three hundred dollars or more. So I mean, these are there's all kinds of variables that can make it a little more expensive. But all the base parts combined cost under two thousand dollars. So we're gonna start off with the computer chassis. Okay, so as you can see here. Um, I'm going to use Newegg for most of my things, uh, just to see a general. I'm sure you can get them cheaper in other places. I'm not showing you how to get the cheapest parts. This is just um, just the basics. Um, so here, as you can see, the computer chassis. It's an Antec 900 black steel tower. Um, it has um, USB 3.0 support. It's a very, very big, just, you know, good ultimate gamer case kind of thing. It has room for lots of uh, fans, power switches, USB plugs, and everything. It's a really nice overall... Um, chassis to get. The next part we have is liquid cooling. You may need to buy two of these depending on how much you want to overclock, but this is the the extreme performance liquid CPU cooler. This is very very nice cooler. Um, as you can see here it's the one on the right side so it has everything in it. Um, $115. This is cream of the crop product right here. The next thing you need to get is a graphics card. This as you can see is by far and away the most expensive item on the list. This costs. I got this. This is the um, AMD. They sell it at two different places. This is the fastest graphics card in the world. It is very expensive, and um, but it is the fastest. It has um four gigs of memory. Um, it can do everything pretty much. It can run the highest settings of like every single game. You can check some of the specs here. Um, if you go to um, to like review sites and stuff, they'll have more. They'll have more specific details. The next site, uh, you know, you get a power supply. This is just kind of doesn't really need to be that great of power supply. This is just the power supply that support that supports the processor that I'm getting. It's not a Sandy Bridge, but I'll discuss that more later. Just a you know decent processor with enough cooling to keep it to keep it good, 700 watts. And the next is the hard drive. Um, I guess if you you really don't need um you don't really need a two gig two terabyte hard drive really you can only go with one terabyte but I just got this what the heck might as well get this it's very fast six uh, gigabits per second transfer rate um it's a very fast hard drive very good um doesn't overheat too much this is pretty much all you need for life the next thing on the list is your RAM. Now, you could probably get a little more RAM than this, but this is enough RAM to run anything, really. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's um, a DDR3 1600 RAM, so it's um, one of the faster versions that are out there right now. Um, definitely worth getting. Um, you can always get 32 gigs of RAM by just buying two of these if you really want to. Um, the processor supports 32 gigs of RAM, so you can get that if you really want. Next object on the list is the motherboard. Now this took a little while to find. Now this one, it may not be the fastest one because this has to be specific to the processor that is here. There is a different processor for the Intel Sandy Bridge, the Intel i7 Sandy Bridge, um, but this is the current one that you need for this one. It's a uh, USB 3.0 supported. It supports the uh, RAM cards and the power supply and everything else there is. All you need to worry about it, see 32 gigs of system memory. So if you really wanted more, you could just buy two of those. Um, it's a very, very high quality processor. Or the motherboard, sorry. And the next pro item on the list is the disk drive. This is just, you really don't need to, ex you can get like a $30 one, but I just got a nice one because what the heck. We get a Blu ray one that can write really fast and, you know, it's just whatever. Disk drive. Next item on the list is the processor. Now, this is the huge debate that people have. Um, it's either the AMD FX, this is the 8-core processor, they each uh, run initially at 3.6 GHz, 
And the other one is the Sandy Bridge processor, which I'll, I'll just pull it up right here. So here you have the Sandy Bridge i7. It's the um, the normal version is 3.3 gigahertz. It's uh, only six cores. Obviously, it has 12 threads, but this one I believe has 16 threads. So you know, a little faster, or more threads, I should say. Not that that really makes you much of a difference. It's mostly the core speed. Um, this you can obviously overclock this, and this one has a faster base time. Obviously, this can be overclocked. Um, some people haven't. Some people are complaining about this that um, it's a little bit slower than they want, or it's harder to overclock, or less reliable than the i7. Um, it probably, um, what I've heard, it is a little bit less reliable, but the fastest processor clock speed in the world, about 8.4 gigahertz at the time, is set by this here processor, the AMD 8 core, which the Sandy Bridge i7 is lagging slightly behind, like 0.1 or 0.2 gigahertz slower. So, you know, you could go with any of them, but I mean, this is $200 less, and uh, as far as the specs are concerned, it's better. So that's why I'm going to be going with this processor instead of the Sandy Bridge processor. Okay, so the next item on the list is a mouse. Now, uh, $60 is a pretty hefty price for a mouse if you're not really going to use it for intense gaming. Um, but I'm, I'm making it very nice, fast computer. So I've actually used this mouse before. It's very, very nice. It um, it glides like a breeze. It's um, It has uh, lots of nice packages, software, explanations, and everything. Um, you'll find it very nice. It has a, also has some macro buttons on the side, as you can see here. Um, so you can um, customize them to whatever game you're using at the time. So that's a very nice mouse. I'd rec definitely recommend getting that. And the next thing is a keyboard. Now, this is a very nice keyboard here. This is the uh, nice gaming keyboard, I should say. Um, um, you had to decide either between this or a gaming keyboard. Now, they're, um, the gaming keyboard that you probably see is the Razer. There's a two different kinds, the Razer Ultimate and the normal Razer. The Razer Ultimate has a backlit, you know, backlights just like this one does. But the problem with the Razer Ultimate is I've read a bunch of reviews and based on the way they make it, um it's very uh they didn't really uh customize it for the alt for the backlit keyboard so they kinda had to make room and it's it's very uh, it's more a lot more inefficient. So if you wanted to get a mechanical you'd want to get the Razer just the normal Razer one that's about seventy bucks. But um I'm going with this one because it's, I think it's better for gaming, even though it doesn't have the fastest response time. Uh, here you can see it has um, a whole bunch of macro keys, 18 macro keys over here, and three different macro settings, so you can technically have um, 54 different combinations here, and obviously you can customize them if you have different games and stuff and change them. It's a very nice keyboard, it's backlit, it has a color spectrum wheel so you can change the color to whatever you want. Um, it's Fast it has a nice fast response time. Obviously, it's not mechanical, so it's not going to be the best of the best. But I think the uh, features it has on it is makes it very very good for gaming. And the last thing on the list is a monitor, and I don't have a link for it just because uh, at the time I didn't really feel like searching and trying to find one. But I bought my monitor for ninety dollars. It's a twenty-one and a half inch uh, full HD monitor. You can uh, I have an Acer. Uh, you can get your monitor. Um, well, the one I got was refurbished supposedly, but um, it just it comes brand new. There's really nothing wrong with it. Um, you can get them for under hundred dollars, twenty one and a half inch monitor. And at the time, I couldn't find one, but I know you can get them for under half to hundred dollars. And then there's the the two hidden costs you have. Uh, the first one would be depending if you have like a hutch or a computer desk or not. If you do, great. You don't have to worry about that. Um, oh, another thing, um, speakers. You might already have them for your old computer. That's that, that's that's likely, which is why I didn't include it in the cost, because you might likely already have a hutch and speakers. But if you don't, you can get some really nice speakers. Like I have like Logitech speakers with the subwoofer for like twenty four dollars. I mean, they don't they aren't really great, but they sound pretty good. And um, the last hidden cost, which is one that you'll have to pay, is to have the person who has to build this whole computer, which that definitely varies. Like I said, my friend can do it for a hundred dollars, but then again, he's not a pro, so he he has a chance of breaking something and. My guess is he's not going to want to pay me the $2,000 he broke. So, you know, there's kind of a risk that goes with that. And um, if you pay professional, you'll have it guaranteed, but it'll cost a lot more money. So those are, that's basically how you build a $2,000 computer. If I'm missing anything um, that I didn't realize, I'll put it in the description for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment.